my um camera is like legit leaning on a diet coke bottle but we move what, what was i gonna know that's <laughs> oh thinking it i'm overthinking it hi my name is jess also known as the fat funny one and welcome back to my channel welcome to the chaos today is a bit of a different video i'm really hoping i get through it without being an emotional wreck and i think i should be i feel a bit better about the whole thing now but if you're watching this you would have seen the title of my video and that is i have just lost my job so what now i want to kind of give a bit of context about what happened um and how yeah let's just talk about it so for those who don't know and this is the first time you're landing on my channel i am a working mum of four wonderful children my husband is a stay-at-home dad we have a dog two cats um and I am the main source of income for my family. To lose my job is a pretty, pretty big deal. So yeah, I, I that's the job, that's my main source of income. Everything else is kind of like a side hustle. So that is my main, main thing, the thing that pays the majority of my life. What I wanted to do, and the reason why I'm recording this video is because I guess while the feelings are still here, I wanted to just share what's going on and how it feels. So I kind of don't feel like I'm losing my mind. Also, I know there are so many other people in the same situation as me at the moment, not just in the UK, but just globally. So many layoffs, so many redundancies, so many companies just not being able to continue on because of just a recession and the cost of living crisis. And it's it's horrible. And I wanted to, I guess, make people feel less alone and hopefully share some encouragement and just, yeah, I think it's nothing to be ashamed of. None of us chose to be in this position. And I want to just talk about it so on monday uh, today is thursday i was recording a day in the life vlog i recorded waking up getting ready with the kids getting school together dropping everyone off school going to aldi doing the food shop a food haul like the whole lot i don't even know if i'm going to post the whole vlog um and if i do if it's going to be before or after this video but i'm gonna play you a clip of it because i was recording myself in meetings and stuff throughout the day and caught the moment that I found out I lost my job and I'm gonna play it for you now. Um, so you probably would have noticed I cut the camera off on that meeting and um, we had like a company meeting called really urgently um, and they, they've they closed the business and we've all lost our jobs. Let me get myself together one sec. The reason why I wanted to share that is because I think capturing that raw emotion just, it makes it so real. And I know there are so many other people who are in the same situation and you're not alone in those like raw, or like heart gut-wrenching, heartbreaking feelings. I, most people didn't realize what was interesting <laughs> It's on Instagram when I shared that I had lost my job. Loads of people were like, don't you just content create full time? No, ma'am. I have had a corporate job always. The only times I haven't ever had a job, and even then I have still had a job, is when I've been on um, maternity leave, when I've had the children. But on Monday, I got a text or a message from one of the founders of the company that I worked for asking everyone to jump onto a meeting because they had to make some tough decisions. Now at the back end of last year some redundancies were made so we just assumed that it was just a couple more redundancies. We weren't expecting for the whole business to to fold. I did get asked a question on Instagram about because I put in the caption when I announced I'd lost my job that I've been on edge since the back end of last year since those redundancies were made and a few people say well you know weren't you prepared. One yes and no it's really difficult because even when your job's at risk there's like and i asked about it the company really thought that they were going to be able to get through this tough time they genuinely did not think this was going to be an outcome this was an absolute last resort um i was on edge because obviously the company wasn't performing well and we knew that but equally we were being reassured that things were going to be okay and I trusted that because I trusted the people that I worked for and I still do trust them I think this was just a really awful situation also from then one of the things that I was doing was starting to put away a bit of an emergency fund but it was only the back end of last year it's only been like three months so I wasn't in a financial position to save like 
chunks and chunks and chunks of money to be able to um, have this big emergency fund should the worst happen like it has. The other thing I wanted to address because I've got a few things or kind of people are a bit unsure. I, the timing of all of this is really bad. Obviously I do do content creation and stuff, um, but all of that money, I had a massive tax bill because obviously you've got your self-assessment in January. So I just paid a huge tax bill. So all of the money that I'd saved, all of my cash flow was basically gone as well. Um, so there was that. Um, so there was just a lot of factors that played into it and made it really difficult. So I was trying to prepare best I can, but equally I was really hopeful that this was not going to be the outcome. Um, so I was shocked, but not shocked because the company was performing not well i don't know how to explain it but ultimately i was preparing the best i can for the worst still did not have time to prepare for the worst and it and the worst happened we were called onto a meeting um and told that the company unfortunately was going into administration this was on the 30th of january we were due to get paid on the 31st of january and they announced that unfortunately they couldn't run payroll for january so we were not going to get paid the next day so that little cushion that i had managed to kind of scrape together over the last couple of months um basically was now going to be used for the bills that i just had not be able to extend if that makes sense so ideally in my mind in when we first got told the company folded i thought okay i've got we're gonna get paid tomorrow, I'll pay all the bills, we'll be sorted for February, and then I've got a little bit of savings that will carry me on a little bit into March, so I've got time. So to find out that actually you're not gonna get paid the next day, that little cushion that I had was being like pulled into now, which left me with a much shorter time span to be able to have money, uh, which is like, just, yeah, and, I was lucky I even had that little cushion, that little bit of money to just cover the absolute bare essentials, not anything extra. Um, and also for the last year, I always put together, I'm quite hot on my budget. I've always had sinking funds. So I put money aside for loads of little things like my kids' birthdays. Um, I have a little rainy day fund, which for example, if we needed a new tire or an electrician to come around or anything like that, there's a little pot of money for that. So I've got little pots of money allocated to certain things. So luckily things like my daughter's birthday next month isn't going to be affected because that money is there and I've already paid for the deposit for her party and things like that. And I'm really grateful that I have that set up and that I work in that way because it's relieved a little bit of the stress. I just didn't have this like big emergency fund cushion, which is going to like cover all the bills for the next few months. I had just had my sinking funds and I'll do another video about how I, how I budget and like how I even do that throughout the year because i think that'll give this a bit more context we found out i on monday i think was just in complete shock and got into like a oh my gosh sort of mode right let's update my cv let's start getting practical and just started applying for like a good billion jobs um and set up a whatsapp chat with some of my colleagues where we could support each other share job opportunities that sort of stuff so i just kind of got on it it didn't really hit me till tuesday morning when i woke up and i was like i've got like what, like, what do i do today and obviously i've got two young children at home and two at school so i still got up and did the school run and you know got to spend time with my babies and stuff like that so it's fine but in terms of that like routine that get up i've got work to do i've got a job i've got a meeting all that stuff was just gone and i felt so lost i was just so like oh my gosh and it's not to say my my career is my sole purpose in life you know i'm a mother of four incredible children they are always my first and most important job in life but like my career means a lot to me i love what i do and it you know part of it is just about being jess i'm not a mum i'm not anybody else i'm just jess in that in my career and i adore that i love that i can have that for myself and when you are not in control of that and it's just gone it's so i can't even explain it i just got up on tuesday and was just like what so whilst i was doing practical things like applying for jobs and stuff like that i just stayed in bed just feeling just awful i shared on instagram obviously losing my job and i had this overwhelming support and people reaching out and i it was like a big virtual hug it was like exactly what i needed but it all still felt really surface level like deep down i still was like what am i gonna do like my anxiety is so bad i've got a family to feed i've got a mortgage to pay so by wednesday um 
I think I was, well, no, I think I was still in the same clothes as Monday, just feeling so sorry for myself. And my husband was like, okay, maybe you should have a shower and sort yourself out. And I did, and I felt much better. And I did a face mask and stuff. And I just was like, come on, come on. And I've had loads of phone calls and loads of people reaching out about work and potential work. And I've had loads of really promising phone calls. And so I'm feeling far more positive. And it's only been a few days. So I'm very lucky because I know so many people are in this position for far far longer and I might be in this position for a long time but some of the calls that I've had have been really promising so hopefully I won't be I when something's out of your control and it's so big it's so so like oh, I can't even think of the word it's so I'm un, not unnerving what is the word it's just so disorientating it's so it's just really throws you out of alignment of everything you know and do and it's so difficult and one of the things that I wanted to share and shared in my Instagram post was about the fact that this is a really volatile time you're really vulnerable you know particularly if you are the main source of income for your family or not if your family for yourself you know if you are in a position where you haven't got anyone else to cover the bills or you've got things out going the pressure is a lot. every time I say pressure I think the pressure is getting worse and it really is but when you're in this state you are obviously applying for lots of jobs there are so many people in the market at the moment the whole recruitment market and, and the hiring market and just economy at the moment is just wild so you're looking at jobs and like 500 other people have applied it's so discouraging and when you're already feeling like down and frustrated it can feel like you're constantly being kicked while you're down and so your self-esteem is going to take a knock because you are going to you know going to get rejections you might not get every job that you land you might not even get a response which i've had you might just constantly be emailed and saying sorry you've been unsuccessful on this occasion and i've had so many of those over the last few days and every time i get it it just like i just oh just like it's so hard and i just wanted to encourage everyone to say try your hardest in this moment to not take it personally there are so many other people in the market and it's not that you're not great or you're not valuable or you're not worthy or you're not going to be good at your next job it's not about that it's just a really difficult time at the moment and the opportunity and the role and exactly what you need is out there for you and i don't say that to be wishy-washy i don't say that to be like airy fairy i don't ex i'm also not saying that for you to think you can sit back do nothing and it's just gonna land in your lap i don't believe in that but there is the right thing for you and there is light at the end of the tunnel and tunnels are some tunnels are long aren't they like have you ever been on a long drive and some tunnels are really short and some are like long long and you're like where is the end of this tunnel and you genuinely can't see the end of it and it goes on and on and on and on for ages it might feel like that right now but the one thing that is absolutely true certain absolutely certain is that there is a light at the end of the tunnel there is an end at the tunnel there is going to be a moment where you come out of it and this situation is exactly that too no matter how long this goes on for no matter how many knocks you take there is light at the end of the tunnel there is hope and that is an absolute guarantee i can't say when it's going to happen i don't know when it's going to happen for me but i know it will happen and i have to hold on to that to keep myself in check and to keep myself going because it's really really difficult i talk about confidence a lot you know it's my thing i wrote a whole book about it but in situations like this when your confidence takes knocks constantly it's really difficult to keep getting back up and putting yourself out there and then you just start you know i apply for a few jobs and one job i got rejected within six minutes of applying six minutes they couldn't even just let my resume just like marinate a little bit like let my application just marinate let me even think that you were reading it no six minutes and it was like soz and i was so like oh my god like horrified for they didn't even that's i haven't even got six minutes to read a whole cv like a whole resume i can't even read in six minutes but when i read the whole rejection email they said they had over 800 applications and so I try really hard not to take it personally and just thought, okay, that, that might not be for me. That's okay. I've just got to get back up and keep going. And it is tough, but I just want to encourage anyone else who is in this scenario at the moment as well that there's light at the end of the tunnel. It will be okay. One of the things that, like some of the practical things that I've been doing that I wanted to share was obviously first thing, update my resume. 
The next thing is announce it. And the reason why I say announce it and tell people in any platform, whether that's LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, your friends or family, is you don't know who's gonna share that you're looking or if they hear about an opportunity and they know that you're now available, if they might say, oh, do you know what? Actually, I heard this is free. If you don't tell anyone, and I know it's really difficult telling people because there are so many feelings around shame and frustration and pride that come into this, like I know that but when you don't tell anybody people aren't going to know to let you know that there's an opportunity or a new job or like some work that they can pass on to you if they don't know that you're available so if you're in a position to and you feel ready announce it to as many people as you can i put it on instagram and stuff and then i put it on linkedin and i've just had so many great responses and like i said promising conversations so put yourself out there announce it to as many people as you can you don't know who's talking to who who's going to hear about an opportunity you you can't foresee that so make sure you're in a position that people know that you're looking you know that you are available to work and hopefully something will come up from one of those conversations so that's a really practical thing you can do and the third thing is your feelings are totally valid acknowledge that you are essentially going through some sort of a grieving process the life you knew the job you knew the colleagues you knew the routine you knew just like that isn't around anymore and you are grieving that there is an element of grief there and i think i at first didn't expect that because on monday i was like okay right practical let's go let's go on tuesday when i just was so overwhelmingly upset and couldn't i just i just couldn't get myself together it was because i was experiencing grief and frustration and sadness and anger and it, a whole host of emotions and one thing that i have done that has helped me is acknowledge those feelings i am someone who loves to push them down and i was like no i can't do that i'm not going to stop myself from crying i'm not going to stop myself from just feeling sorry for myself for a moment because my feelings are valid and i need to acknowledge them so that i can deal with them and process them accordingly if i don't process them this is going to just be buried deep and i i'm not going to be okay so acknowledge that those feelings are okay acknowledge that there is going to be some sort of a grieving process that you're going to go through and reach out to people who can support you in that moment so what's next I, I don't know from a professional point of view i've obviously had loads of phone calls i would like to land a similar job um because i do really love what i do in the interim though um i've had a couple of calls about supporting some people um with some of their just recruitment stuff so not my job in its entirety not the strategy piece or the deni piece but in the interim maybe doing just some um basic recruitment work which would obviously tie me over for a little while and i'm that i'm so up for that like i've got a hustle i'm always prepared to to work like <laughs> I'm down if someone's offering me an opportunity and I know I can do it and I could do it in the next couple of months and get some money in then that's what I'll do so I've had a few conversations like that and yeah it's just putting myself out there I have shared on LinkedIn about doing more corporate talks I do loads of corporate talks I run loads of lunch and learn sessions which I've done before whether it's about confidence empowering your teams from a corporate perspective or um, the diversity and inclusion stuff I've done both so I'm putting myself out there and offering those services up um to try and and land some work that way the other thing i've been doing is getting testimonials from old clients because i think that will really support uh, my journey and hopefully support some new work coming in so i've reached out to some of the clients that um i've worked with before also people who have reached out to me and said i'm really sorry i haven't got anything to offer you at the minute or i've you know is there any way I could help? I've been saying, actually, if I've worked with you, could you possibly give me a recommendation um, that I can share or a testimonial that I can share in the hope that that encourages someone to take a chance on me? So I've been doing that as well. Um, in the other interim, Trevor, my husband, who's obviously been a stay-at-home parent for the last couple of years, he has worked part-time, but um, came back into the home full-time um, because actually between us juggling shifts was really, really difficult. Um, but he has also been looking for work as well. So basically, whichever one lands a job first, uh, we will work around that. So he has secured um, a couple of interviews and stuff, which is really exciting for him as well. Uh, so yeah, we, we're, we're going full hog. I am putting things on vintage. I am, I'm hustling, hustling and hustling hard. And I know I seem probably a bit lighthearted and I don't know, maybe I don't come across as like particularly anxious, but trust me, I have got this like ball in the pit of my stomach that sits there and I am hopeful and I am positive and I am trying, you know, 
I wouldn't lie about any of that stuff and try and encourage others if I didn't feel encouraged myself but there is still that ball of anxiety um and I'm probably masking it slightly but it does sit there which is why I'm like let's keep going let's let's do everything I can um because that's all I can do so yeah that is where we're at at the moment it is a challenging season um but one that I know I will get through and I just have to keep going that's what I have to do yeah thank you so much for listening and watching and getting this far if you have I've definitely was like blah, 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 blah. so if you understood half of that you're you're a top tier person but also just thank you for the outpouring of support and love um if you're one of those kind people who has reached out to me on any of the other platforms I deeply deeply appreciate you so if you would like to subscribe <laughs> please 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 do and don't forget to turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos that I'm hopefully going to be chucking at you um over the next few months I'm wishing you all the best have an incredible week take care